into the takeoff, then that's going to be an advantage because what we're doing is not just trying to create a high pole angle, but we want to have the pole be rotating forward and upward the whole time. So a uh, high pole angle allows us to not have to rotate that pole through a greater range of motion. Uh, starting the pole rotation before it hits the box uh, gives us a little bit of an advantage uh, in getting the pole rotating before we even load it. So we're going to take this through on a seven step approach here guys. Um, I'll show you here as a right hander, left foot takeoff. This is what I want. On our first step, I want the uh, right hand, you can flip everything down, right hand below the, below the waist at the butt cheek level and the left hand by the sternum here. So we're not going to be out here, uh, we're going to be right here. We have Cole, uh, Krishna. Krishna? Yeah, Cole. And what I want to do is um, let's literally count out our steps for right now. We'll take a seven step approach. Uh, so for the first three, I want you to feel like the pole is relatively vertical. For the next three, we're going to be gradually dropping the pole like this. And then the, the last two steps, uh, one stride, we're going to be planting the pole here. So it's uh, three, two, one, pole still vertical. Three, two, one. At this point, whole tip, if you can imagine it, should be at about eye level. You see my top hand is behind my hip now, and my uh, bottom hand has moved right in front of my belly button. This is gonna position us so that the pole is as weightless as possible. And then our penultimate, we curl, and then press on our takeoff. So repeating again on those last three, we should see gradual lowering of the pole over three. One, two, three. Just ending up with the pole tip at eye level right here. Uh, and the bottom hand right here. Curl on our penultimate. Press overhead on the takeoff. A little bit different than how a lot of people will naturally do it, where they steer the pole out in front like this. We want to we want to control the pole not with our top hand like this or our bottom hand but with our top hand here. So you can feel the weight of the pole be different if we do this versus if we do this. This makes it as weightless as possible. We give it some counterbalance back here. A lower weight pole means that we can run faster. And if we can lower the pole over those last four steps, see, you can see how it's rotating forward and upward here. Uh, over the last four, curl, press. Now when it hits the box, it has some momentum to uh, rotate forward and upward even before we take off. So let's do this walking first, just in place walking. <laughs> and uh, then we'll do it as a march, like a little jog march. And uh, when you take it to pole ball practice tomorrow, you can maybe work on that on a five. If we're doing it on a five or anything shorter than a seven, we chop off the front. So it would be one vertical and then three uh, pole drop and then last two steps are planned. Okay? Happy birthday, Greg. Was... That? Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. How did you like your card, Greg? Oh, did you, did you see your card? I did. Yeah. Did you like the basketball hoop I drew? Didn't look like a basketball hoop when I got it. <laughs> This, where you're fishing out in front here, and you got all the way to the pole out in front. Just almost imagine the bottom end stays right close to your body the whole time, and we drop the we drop the top end behind us. Like this. That's how we steer. So now this is very strong. This is very weak. Um, and then also let's do little little checks here, guys. Part of the role of slowing this down to a walk is that we can know uh, over our last three that we have a gradual pole drop that uh, on our last three, that the pole tip should be at about high level. The left hand should be a belly button, the right hand should be below the, below the waist here. On our penultimate, we curl so that we're right in front of the eye, like this. Uh, we're moving the pole forward and upward right here. Curling, the, the top hand should be right in front of the eye. And then on our press, we want to be overhead before that foot actually hits the ground. So. Don't, don't curl all the way out here. Don't make it one motion. Don't roundhouse it. It's curl press. And just go on semi loose grip here. So it's basically just sits in the crux of your forefinger and thumb. This hand doesn't need to really have any pressure on it until we go to plant. 
you know. So this it'll basically be balanced in both sides. That way we have some some movement like this to be able to run semi naturally, and the shoulders can rotate. Don't don't death grip it on either hand. <laughs> are you are you saying? off the platform? Oh no, you're just you're just shorter than I am. I'm energy efficient, John. Okay. I take up less space. You're right. I have more entropy. All right. Um, what? Uh, so we didn't really vlog much for the last two weeks. So explain three weeks maybe, because uh, we have online training. What was the focus for these guys the last three, the last cycle, last month? So we wanted to get in. You can take uh, it. You just take it. There you go. We wanted to get in. Uh, uh, we wanted to add on to what we had been doing the previous Test cycle. Sweet, we put in baby. a ton of work the previous cycle. The guys were a little bit buried, maybe even more so than I had expected. And uh, we wanted to unload very slightly, but make a shift towards up, things like greater technical work, greater emphasis on technique in the in the event specific stuff, uh, doing tree, true max velocity work, uh, greater focus on eccentric capacities. So we kept. Uh, hey one day in of acceleration development, uh, pure acceleration, flat ground acceleration development. We did another day where it was over hurdles and uh, in the long jump runway. And then one of our days shifted to true top end speed. So the week cycle before we were doing more uh, kind of bleed in top end speed. We weren't at true max velocity. We had been kind of sub max with max velocity mechanics and this last cycle we got into true max velocity now we're starting things off again we're two weeks out from a meet so uh, we are going to kind of be pretty gentle pretty conservative these next couple days and um, get a true unload over uh, 10 days leading up to the meet I want to see these guys do pretty well be fresh coming into the meet we're going to continue with the uh, shift towards greater emphasis on the technique since we are going to be in season here in just two weeks time uh, We're unloading in volume a little bit keeping the intensity real high uh, Weight room work is is going to be dropping down a little bit. We're still going to squat heavy on Mondays, but uh, and uh, Wednesdays becomes a, a more even more eccentric focused uh, weight room work and Friday weight room work tends to, uh, is gonna drop off a little bit. Pretty much just be Olympic lifts for the lower body. Way better, way better. It's easy. Let's go, baby. Why are you going? Why are you going 14 again? 114 to be two because it's 1K better than me. Uh -huh. Let's go, guys. Yep. Lay way. Lay way. programming that we do here, I think I would uh, match it against any programming in the world. I think we have some great coaches here who really know what they're doing and have come from some great systems and great mentorships and great education. So I think it all starts around the programming. Uh, I would argue that there's not coaches of the same quality programming out there on the internet or they're few and far between. Um, beyond that, I think we've set up a system now where we can deliver the program very seamlessly where the tech is unobtrusive and in fact actually helpful so it can guide the workout it can actually facilitate communication between the coach and the athlete we have uh, a way to deliver video back and forth so these are all logistical things that really got in the way of uh, 
programming in the past, online programming in the past, and really were compromises anytime someone chose to do online programming. And I think what we've done now is really set up a, uh, a system where we're, we've worked around them. We found solutions around all of these previous constraints to where now we can deliver training online without compromise.